Hello, everybody. Um, wow, I hear the voices strong over here on the on the mic system. Um, here we go. So, hello. My name is Edward Cole Miller. I'm a medical oncologist, and I've worked in longevity. I've worked as a GP. Um, I'm here to talk to you about a new system, sort of what the future could look like for medical information, and how does that help? First of all, why is that relevant for all of us here? And is this something that might help us? Is this something that might hurt us? And what does the system like this look like in the future? Okay, so this presentation is something I've been working on for a while. I've been stewing on it, thinking about it, and it's a dream. It's a presentation, it's a dream, it's a call to action. And like you all know, like we have on the figure, top right-hand side, you know, we go from ideas to then actionable results to then hopefully some sort of uh, output or uh, uh, making a change in the world. So, why should we care about this? We should care about this because all of you are the people that I'm working to build something like this for. Um, you are all international. Um, you're from lots of different countries, from Venezuela, from North Korea, from you know, um, Poland, from everywhere around the world. And you're the types of people that travel around a lot, that probably live in a lot of different countries. So having treatment in one country and not having your medical records pass to the other country, um, as you may well know, is a problem. Um, and this is a problem that I'm looking to create a framework for to help solve, okay? So I have a background as a GP. I worked as a medical oncologist. Recently, I've been working in longevity medicine through a functional medicine approach. I think Walter later is taking us through some of the um, lifestyle, lifestyle medicine things, which is great. Okay, and we've heard a little bit of that just now from Gregory as well. You know, how does food and nutrition make a difference in our lives? These 15 tons of food that we're going to consume throughout the course of our lives, um, which is by far the largest exposure to antigens which we will have in the course of our lives. Okay, so I've lived in quite a few different countries, which we'll get to now in a second, and I've had some medical problems. Um, unfortunately, the body, you know, I'm very lucky to have gotten a great body, but some things go wrong. I've had, I was shipwrecked in 2013, I broke my shoulder, um, I needed to have an operation and some surgery as well as, you know, CT scans and MRI scans for that. I've had an issue with my inner ear where we were worried I might have had cancer. Luckily, that wasn't it. Um, but, you know, took a series of sequential MRIs. I've had some testicular swelling for which I had some ultrasound scans and follow-up. And uh, oop, I've had some back pain for which I've had MRIs, okay? All of these interventions and things have happened between these three top places, so specifically Italy, Northern Ireland, and England. In none of the places did any of the records move from one to the other. So, even in the UK, specifically Northern Ireland and England, none of my medical records moved from one place to another. And I thought and I think, wouldn't it be great if we could find a way to make that work on a more international scale? So specifically having a medical record system that integrates around the world for all of us to use, okay? So in the meantime, as I've been in these places, I've also lived in Spain, the United States, um, Hungary, Indonesia, Czech Republic, Moldova, and Thailand. So, you know, lots of different countries throughout the world. And um, this is why I'm motivated to try to create a system and a framework that helps information to pass more easily across borders with less government control. I'm going to talk about some of the ways in which we do that in a second, and that's just, that's one of our next slides here. Um, what if it could be as easy as WhatsApp? What if it could be as easy as sending a message on WhatsApp to, uh, you know, I, I was sending a message about maybe six months or a year ago, and I thought, wow, I wish that it was this easy to send my medical information to somebody, to send my medical information to a provider, to be able to transport some of these things across different countries. And that's when I started to have an idea about a type of framework that we could use to do this, okay? These types of frameworks aren't things that happen overnight. They're not quick projects. They take a series of years, but hopefully they could bring some sort of a good, um, or they could be beneficial to most people 
throughout the world because they would allow for better transport, they would allow for people to live in different countries in an easier way and allow for a lot of information not to get lost. So as an example of that, I'd like to introduce you to my very good friend, Arthur. <laughs> so this is Arthur. He lives in France. He's a chef. He has also lived just about everywhere and anywhere. We lived a while. We, we, we spent a few months in Nicaragua in Central America um, about two or three years ago, just as COVID, just as COVID was breaking out. But Arthur, um, Arthur's a chef, and he lives in these different places around the world. So I'd like to present a scenario of what this type of system that I'm proposing could do. Then we'll look into the backbone of what it is, okay? So this is a future scape. Some of you might recognize it. It's one of the drawings from the Neom, from the line um, in, in Saudi Arabia. And what could some of the future information technology and healthcare look like? And how does that translate to, to humans, to humans on the ground, to people that would need to use these things? So here's what it looks like. Uh, Arthur would go to his GP. His GP would ask him for access to his data, and Arthur would give um, the GP a biometric reading, either on a scanner that's at the GP's office with a fingerprint, or on an app on his phone, okay? So this is more of a decentralized system, and we'll get into that. The GP would be able to then see that, oh wow, you know, Six months ago, Arthur had a chest infection for which he needed some antibiotics, and actually, he did have a reaction against the penicillin that he was given. So, we need to change the type of antibiotic that we're giving. Arthur not necessarily would remember this, uh, as I well know. He's not, the, he's not the most, he doesn't remember things all that well. Um, so, that would be a way in which you would change treatment of patients. And then, for example, the GP might be able to see that he had a chest x-ray with a suspicious lump that was there six months ago from Thailand when he was on a trip. You would be able to see that, integrate that into his current care, and have a better idea of a plan. So I think most people can agree that, that if we had access to information from ourselves and we were able to give authorization and access to this information to other people in the healthcare sector, it would help us to have better outcomes. Okay, and this in, in medicine, this is called continuity of care. Okay, and, and there's publications that talk about how continuity of care makes a difference to outcomes and how people with better continuity of care do better over longer periods of time. Okay, so the system I'm proposing, this way of transferring data between one country and the other, is not a, is not a quick fix. <laughs> Um, it's something that takes, takes a long time, or would probably would take a long time. And the example here is the rabbit and the hare. Um, and you know, every time I read that story, the, the tortoise always wins. Um, excuse me, the tortoise and the hare. Um, the tortoise always wins, and you know, a, a, um, a steady rudder is better than a fast motor. And, oops, so yeah doing things one brick at a time, one step at a time, step by step. So the system that I'm envisioning talks about, and today we're going to go over very briefly, I'm gonna give you a little bit of the 10,000 foot view or the, you know, the, the 3,000 meter down view of a system that has to do with medical, medical coding, medical standardization of information, and then what that looks like for people. We're going to go through a numbering system. We're going to go through the back end of open source medical file system uh, standardization. We're going to go into some country specific server file storage issues that are there currently and what are some ways that potentially this system could help to solve that. Um, some cross country access issues, privacy, pseudo anonymity and anonymity, confidential notes, user uptake and cryptocurrency. I also have a section at the bottom that I'm not going to go through today that, that talks about a medical passport for practitioners and a framework for that, worldwide medical exams, international medical school system, and open source electronic medical record systems. Okay. So, numbering concept. Um, there was a book a few years ago from James C. Scott, which is Seeing Like a State. Okay. Talks about how we are you know, how we become identified. And really, the, the technology right now that we use for identification is name, surname, and date of birth. You have a passport. Every passport in the world has 
name, surname, and date of birth. And that's the unique identifier that identifies us. Generally in medicine, we use codes. So we use numbering systems that help to specifically identify patients. And also for the patients that would like it, help to ensure anonymity so that it doesn't specifically cross correlate to their name, surname, or date of birth. Okay. So right now in the NHS in the UK, which I worked in the UK for a series of years, um, we use 10 number system, so we use a 10 digit numbering system, and that's an example of this would be the 513-468-7124, two blocks of three numbers and one block of four numbers. So I'm proposing a system that's called the medical healthcare numbering system, and it's 12 digits. It allows for one trillion possibilities, and each country has a specific country code identifier, which is um, the taken from the international telephone network, and it allows for the information to be accessed anywhere around the world. So you would specifically be able to target a, a data set from a patient wherever you were in the world. So for example, if you were in Spain and you were making a, and you were making a request for someone in Spain, you would put you would put this number here, 34155128 System would automatically convert that to the full length 16 digit code, which everyone would have, um, which would be the 0034-3415-5128-9872, okay? And, and if, you were in, if you were in the same country, that would happen automatically. If you were in a different country, then you would put the country code in and as you can see from here, pretty much all countries are indicated, the 213 countries that are on the telephone network, and even some of the, um, you know, even some of the jurisdictions that are a little bit in between do have a country code, just like Jersey or Guernsey or the Isle of Man or, you know, and, and there are some country codes as well for, for free cities. You know, free cities can set up their own types of country codes to have specific types of telephone number addresses so that that's relevant for them as well. Okay, so if you were to type in existing systems, um, importing existing systems, what that would look like, we would add most medical numbering systems right now vary between eight and 10 digits, okay? To import, to cross import these systems, we would add zeros at the front of the numbers to be able to have a, a better numbering system so that it's compatible with the system that I'm proposing. So the number typed in by the UK, this, the, the top NHS number would be an example. Let's see if we can, there we go. The NHS number would be an example of this. And then this would be converted into this 12 digit system here. And then if someone were looking at it, for example, from the United Arab Emirates, from Dubai or Abu Dhabi, they would type in the country code, which in the UK is 0044, and then they'd have their number system just at the end here. Okay, and this is for, this is to cross import existing numbering systems from, from other types of platforms, okay? Medical file format standardization. Do we need this? Do we not need this? Why? Um, I think we do. I think it makes sense um, because it allows for a lot of different things. It allows for information to be passed um, from one country to the other without barriers around the world. Um, it allows for there to be one system where people can speak to each other and understand each other better. And it allows for um, artificial intelligence to be able to glean pieces of information that we not, might not think of as, having, as being relevant, but actually turn out to be relevant in some way. Okay. So um, this type of system would at least need to be able to process um, input and output, medical notes, prescriptions, laboratory results, radiological imaging. So one of the issues that I want to address with this talk is one of the problems that we're coming up against in data storage. And one of the problems in data storage is really more and more as we go forward, we have better and better imaging, but that takes up more and more space. On average in the UK, each person has about four megabytes of, of data on their record from, from notes each year. Every person has about 76 megabytes of image storage each year. And that takes somewhere in the, in the ballpark of about 5,000 terabytes per year. 
These are mainly stored in different places, in different trusts. That's why when I moved from Northern Ireland to England, there was no connection between the different data sets because there was no way to pass the data from one to the other because there was no file format standardization. So I'm trying, or I'm speaking about a decentralized information storage system. And this decentralized information storage system would be encouraged and paid for by a cryptocurrency which would underlie the data storage and would reward people for uploading their data onto their own devices and then storing anonymous data packs from other people, similar in the way that it works to the way that BitTorrent would store specific packs of data without having all the pieces together um, on different devices around the world which makes it also easier to have cross-country access to the information since no specific people would store their own data, but the other data would be partially stored by other people on pieces of their devices for which they'd be rewarded by a cryptocurrency system. So one of the aspects of the system is the ability to, um, to remain anonymous and or pseudonymous. We would encourage people to, to use their real names and if they did not want to do so, the anonymity and pseudonymity in these systems would be respected. Um, one of the places where it would not be respected, however, is for providers. Providers would need to be specifically identified and that's something that happens right now. Um, that would be a continuation of the current system as it is. Um, confidential information on the system People with certain types of mental health issues, they would need to, um, you know, you might have something where only a practitioner could see the data. Um, so the, the initial for use case would really be people that want to empower themselves and have access to their data in a unified way. And we're working, I'm working with a team now to be able to structure some of this data standardization out so that we can import data from different systems. One of the biggest systems around the world being the EPIC system that they use in the United States. But there's different types of electronic medical record systems that exist around the world for, for storing medical data. So, um, you know, the initial people that would want to use these sort of things would be people that would want to be able to have better access to their own information, be able to spread that around the world wherever they go. And then we would work on a cryptocurrency, which is the monetization side of it. The monetization side of this, with a, with a standardized practice around the information, you're then able to access the information um, really wherever you are in the world, and you're able to you're able to monetize some of this to different companies if they want to search things in an anonymous way. So this is the this is my, this is, um, yeah, this is my idea around, here we go. <laughs> this is my idea around a new and different system for electronic medical records called continuity. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you all have a lovely day.